And this is where the identities were born. So we're trying to prove the sine of x minus y divided by the sine of x plus sine of y. That's going to be tangent x minus tangent y divided by tangent x plus tangent y. That's y. We rewrite the left-hand side because we're not lazy. Sine of x minus sine of y divided by the sine of x plus sine of y. Then we're expanding out the sine of a minus b. That's going to be sine of a cosine b minus sine of b cosine a. Then the sine of a plus b is going to be the sine of a cosine b minus uh, plus the sine of b cosine a. OK. Now, on that left-hand side, we're going to go and we're going to expand out that guy, the sine of x minus the sine of y. That's the sine of x cosine y minus the sine of y cosine x. What's next? Divided by, that's sum, the sine of x cosine y plus cosine sine of y why? Why? Oh! When you redo this proof, make sure you catch that part. What are you going to do now? You're going to divide both top and bottom by cosine x, cosine y? Why? Oh, because we're trying to get the tangent in there, and the tangent's the sine of the cosine, so it behoove us to divide by cosines. And we go and we do that in the numerator. We take sine x, cosine y, and we divide it by cosine x, cosine y, minus, uh-huh, same thing. Then, do that to the denominator, too. All right. The sine x, cosine y, sine y, cosine y, divided by cosine x, cosine y, cosine x, cosine y. And now we're left with dramatic reduction. We see an innocent did fall, but what are we left with? A whole bunch of ratio identities. Yeah! Ratio! Do it. Okay, sine x over cosine x is 10x, 10 10y. 10 now see that guy? It's off due to a fat Y, but that's not the main problem of the proof. We are the VSA. We uphold the sanctity of life. We shield the weak. No innocent shall fall. We will never know defeat. As you may have before, let me be the first to call you. Redo it.